Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We here are live in Las Vegas for IBM Interconnect. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante and with Wikibon.org. Our next guest is Adam Archer, DevOps, Core Services Lead at IBM. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Great to see you. So Bluemix is trending this morning on Twitter. Obviously a lot of developer focus. We said it um, with Bluemix is really moving fast. Yep. I mean, almost to the fast where like you can't pass faster. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Getting ready. Docker, a lot of cool stuff coming in. Modern, agile, cool stuff in the yep, cloud. Yep. Obviously, DevOps is awesome. Uh, what are you working on here? What's your story? Uh, what's going on with the labs? What's some of the sound bites on the floor? What are you seeing? What's the vibe? People deer in the headlights? Are they engaged? Are they deer? Give us the scoop. What's going on? Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, what I'm working on is uh, what's called Bluemix DevOps Services. So, what we're really trying to do is improve the way that developers can actually work with the Bluemix platform. So, like you said, that's really cool, people are enjoying it, um, are really, really engaged with it. But one of the sort of gaps that Dean and Bluemix are really trying to close is that it, it for you in terms of helping you really figure out how to develop for the platform. It does a great job of, of running your application and a, and a great job of really helping you. For the Bluemix platform or DevOps scale in general? For the Bluemix platform, right? So what we're trying to do is bring the DevOps, bring DevOps workflows and DevOps capabilities uh, to developers trying to develop for the Bluemix platform to really uh, help facilitate how they how they manage their applications and how they manage their development. And you do this through a set of cloud services that you're exactly for. yeah. So talk more about that. So uh, the the history of the offering actually is uh, we we started setting out to 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 bring a a, a cloud. Offering of uh, of one of our our flagship um, our flagship task tracking and, and project management tools. That was the uh, originally uh, what we know of today as Bluemix DevOps Services was it, that that's where it came from. It was uh, it was the DAS offering of our Jazz product line, and what we really realized is you know, as it evolved and, and cloud really became you know the industry standard and if you couldn't host people's applications, development tooling and, and tracking them, you, you really didn't have anything with, with just those capabilities, right? So um, really this sort of perfect pairing between Bluemix and DevOps services to allow us to be able to, to, to really improve greatly how people develop with our tools, also facilitate how people can develop for the Bluemix Robert, this morning in his keynote gave some stats on the percentage of large organizations that are doing Agile um, and DevOps, it was like 75%. Right, Who's it's not everyone. doing it, right? Yep. So, yep. And we were talking off camera, one of the challenges that you got attracting in young people, young developers, uh, we had uh, some VCs on and they all talk about how everybody develops in the, in the public cloud. Uh, you guys relate to that game. Talk about what you're doing there to attract those, those young yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, so that's a, and uh, and the reality is, and one of the realities that we've really been realizing is that the history of, of IBM and how we've delivered really has historically been focused on the big enterprise and the big business and on you know really helping foster like hundreds or even thousands of developers to work together. And what you miss there is that when you get you know a young a, a young college graduate or um, or even even a developer that is in an enterprise situation, but is is you know trying to figure out what tools they want to use on their own. You can't have that same. You, you, they're coming in with a whole different set of expectations. They want to be successful in seconds or you know minutes or seconds, not have a whole bunch of setup time and a big roadmap to to get their project set up before they're successful. So what we're really focusing on DevOps, you know, as much as we're trying to support some of those large collaboration flow, we're also really heavily focusing on making a single developer or a small team of developers productive as quickly as possible. And our, and our goal is to get people to be able to come to our site and with no prior knowledge, be developing 
deploying their application on the Bluemix platform. And, in, and, in and so how do you do that? How do you compress that cycle, Adam? It's the, the product itself and the services around that. Can you yep. describe that in a little yeah, bit Yeah, so, um, so the way that we're really compress that is by essentially taking some of the barriers down to the setup of the environment. You know, with, with, with cloud, you have the advantage of being able to avoid a huge, a huge local development environment set up for our users um, by facilitating them actually being developed right on the platform rather than locally. Uh, they're able to to immediately start start working without having to configure everything. Um, it, it also means that they, when they're developing the environment, um, they. Uh, when they're developing for the platform where they're actually going to run the thing, it it avoids that sort of leap between the local develop and the gap between that local development setup and what you're actually going to be doing with the tool once you're with your application once you're looking to go out to or looking to to go further with it. So by by giving them you know samples to start with, um, getting them straight from you know creating their first project or creating their app straight into uh, we We've got a web IDE that they can edit their codes. So of course they can use uh, whatever local they want, but in this web IDE, it allows it allows us to get into the code, immediately start making changes, and immediately see those changes running live. Adam, talk about the um, old new ways. You guys are really talking about this is the new developer model, yeah. right? I mean, obviously the cloud yeah. is where we're local host to the cloud, and then obviously the data center is a big part of <laughs> IBM's existence. So. You know, you got to be relevant on both sides. It's not about rip and replace. Right, so talk about course, how yeah. you guys are bridging that, and what is the developer mindset? You, you know, I'm old enough to know that 15, 20 years ago, developers very in-house oriented. We used to call it code yep. days, right? Yep. You know, slow workflows, stable operations. Mm -hmm. Is DevOps selling in the enterprise, or is it just cloud ops? I mean, so what's I the mean, mindset I mean, it's a mix. I see it as an evolution, right? I think there are still a lot of enterprises that aren't embracing it, and I, you know, I think that that's, I think it's a mistake, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> I do too, totally. Um, so the, the, <laughs> the reality, they don't get in front of this way. The reality is, like, the, the historical means of, de of de delivering software was, at the end of the day, what you're shipping is, Right, you've got. So I got to ask you. I got to ask you. If I'm your best friend, I'm a CIO, and I got this big enterprise, and I say, Adam, bottom line, me, what should I do with DevOps? What's right. your advice? How would you see the straight, the straight, like, like the get the, your head the out elevator out of your pitch head. for DevOps? Yeah, just like hard. It's about user feedback. It's about user feedback and shortening the cycles, right? So what I was, what I was about to just get into was the truth means of delivering software is you, you've got your golden master disk yeah. at the end of your release cycle, right? And that goes out, and your next isn't coming out for a year or for, you know, yeah. for however long. So you can't deliver fixes to your users. You can't actually rev that, that product. So naturally, the development cycles that you would use to develop in that environment were tailored around making sure that that thing you get to, that's, it's got to be perfect, right? It's got to be the end goal. Um, and it, it, it means that your feedback loops with your customers are, you know, you spend 12, 18 months developing that thing, and you have to actually go and work really hard to get feedback and make sure you're heading the right way. With so DevOps, what you can do is you're pushing features out, um, you, you, can, you can dark launch things, you can invite, you know, close, close friends and, and allies, or you know, people who are just interested in helping yeah. you evolve, and get things out quickly, That's agile, and then rev right? them. That's agile, right? That's that's kind of the model. Right, That's yeah. what you're saying. The new model is focus on the business problem. So it's a business model problem and a mindset, cultural mindset, and then development life cycle. Yep. Okay, cool. Now let's go into the hood. So Blue Mix, I've heard in the hallways here, is really making progress on this auto update. So like when you have code update, integrated stacks, it's not that trivial. Talk about the gold disk is assumes a waterfall yeah, yeah, yeah. like software development right. life cycle. But now when you're like I might have other code bases, so you know, auto configuration, the provision, the orchestration the versioning control. Mm -hmm. Talk about what's going on with that with DevOps. Is there new stuff that you could talk about that? Like with the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm having so trouble So if I, if I, up, if I update code, Dev, uh, Bluemix code, right. it's going to have side effects in other parts of the stack. How in does, other parts of like my Other code bases, other code other, bases, uh, other tools. Right. Um, so I mean like one of the, one of the principles of DevOps is baking test automation right into your, into your, into your process, right? Like if you're, 
if you're using a delivery pipeline where developer commits are going straight out to your application, if you're not, if you don't have automated tests around that, it, you're flying blind, right? Yeah. When you when a developer commits <laughs> and you don't that you're that you're not regressing yourself or your or your stakeholders, that your API layer isn't regressing, then it's it, it it's chaos, right? So the that's one of the fundamental tenets of DevOps is that that test automation and that that process is baked right in. So uh, it, that's fundamental because you're on a feedback cycle. You listen to the customers. You got a feedback cycle that's shorter, so that automation is critical, right? That automation is critical. Yeah, absolutely. And the, you know, the other thing about it is, test automation is great, but test automation doesn't catch everything, right? Yeah. So one of the things that you have to get used to, and I think this is one of the things that that enterprise is really struggling with, is that with with DevOps practices, when you're rolling out the latest features on a you know a daily, hourly basis. Um, you're going to see problems, right? You, things are going to get by, and things are you, you're going to have regressions, and you're going to have breaks. The, the the thing that I like to talk about is that the metric that really matters when you're develop when you really are developing with DevOps principles, it's not it's not mean time to failure, right? Like that's the way of thinking, right? I you know yeah. uptime of yeah. three hundred <laughs> days without a second of death, like that's, that's we did good, yeah, yeah, that's know. that, and you know that's so the still, metrics are changing. That's still important, but what's really important now is not failure, it's mean time delivery, right? If I introduce a problem to my site, you know, that, that sucks, but if I can fix that problem in two minutes, you know, how, how, much, how much trouble has really been so caused. So if percent of organizations are doing DevOps and Agile, what percent, in your opinion, are doing it well? And what <laughs> Do it, you know, I actually think that the entire industry is still figuring out what doing it well means, mm -hmm. right? So, um, what percentage are doing it well? I, I think that number is close to zero. Well, right? how should Frankly, we think yeah. doing it well? What does that mean? And, and you know, what's your vision as to how to get people there? Um, I mean, the 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 way to do it well is to really embrace what I was. But it's really to embrace those shorter feedback loops and to not be afraid to test on your users. Right? That's that's the whole value of the thing. Right? You 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 now have an immediate line to your users. You're connected to them constantly. And if you're not leveraging that feedback loop, and if you're not, you know, properly instrumenting your apps to see behave when you roll out the new feature, and if that actually did improve, uh, improve the experience and improve the metrics you're trying to improve, right? You know, when I roll out this new feature, um, are people using it? Do the people who use it immediately fall off and leave my site and never come back? Um, do they do they love it, right? Is it, is it immediately successful? You need to be able to tell that stuff immediately, mm -hmm. and you need to be able to react to that. Because w with with the power of a DevOps pipeline, if I do see that you know the the outcome of the change that I delivered is not what I what I wanted, it is not what I expected. I need to be able to, with the push of a button, just turn that off, right? And maybe we go back to the drawing board, and we figure out what was wrong and what we can what we can do better. And if our apps are properly instrumented. Even with having that out there for a short period of time, or with having that out there and released to only you know one percent of our user base or something, we have a wealth to figure out how to get it right next time. And then you you know you immediately start working on that again, and again you roll it out right away, and again you use that tight feedback loop to get it right. Adam, really appreciate you coming on the cube. I want you to just end the segment by just sharing the perspective of the vibe at the show and what you got going on with this lab that, uh, later today. Sure. If someone's watching, what's the vibe? What's it like here? So the vibe, um, everyone's really, really excited about cloud. I mean, everyone's talking about Bluemix. Everyone's talking about how they can embrace some of these DevOps principles, embrace the crowd, the cloud. Um, hybrid cloud is a really hot topic. How enterprises can, um, you know, keep their their conform to the the requirements that they have, either from their from their business or even from their from their country or their business sector. Um, keep their data local, but really still be able to leverage things like containers and uh, and, and DevOps principles to to hit that that those tight feedback back loops and get uh, you know make quick rapid progress, but without without compromising stuff. So the vibe is just really about um, a, a, about, about embracing change and modernizing. It's so software. great on. This yeah. is awesome. Yeah. I really like it. I mean, I just love the vibe. The big data event has. Too the big data force is like it's very it's very intoxicating. It's yeah, like it's yeah. got from a geek standpoint, but also the outcomes on the business side are significant. We'll be live in Las Vegas. We'll be right back with our next segment after this short break. <laughs>